Hello, I'm Gaz from the Mini Painting Punk and in this video we're going to go back in time and make some scenery from a really old issue of White Dwarf. So I saw an article in White Dwarf recently um, about scenery and how we used to sort of populate our battlefields before um, all this sort of professional scenery that you get nowadays, like the stuff that comes in the Warcry box set or um, the stuff you can buy from other third party companies as well. And um, I realized that sort of between this scenery and having access to a 3D printer, um, one of the things I've not done in a long time is uh, make scenery. So um, I went digging through um, the old White Dwarf back catalog and I found a tutorial for a townhouse that I attempted to make when I was a wee nipper. Um, that didn't turn out very well at the time. I think I made it entirely out of cereal packets. Nice uh, packet of crunchy nut you've got here. Pretty expensive as I recall. And it was just really flimsy and didn't hold together very well. And paint job wasn't great either. Um, well, I'm a grown man now and I've got some foam board and some modeling card. Um, so uh, let's have a look and see if I can do any better. Now, if you want to build along, um, I've got uh, links in the description to the article and the templates I used. Plus, I'll leave some links in there about where to get stuff like foam board and modeling card. Let's give it a go. So the first thing to do is get a pair of scissors and cut out these handy templates that come with the article. Um, I've actually scaled these up a little bit because Warhammer Fantasy stuff tends to be a little bit smaller than the New Age Sigmar stuff and I wanted most normal size models to be able to look like they fit through the door. So the next step is just to mark out our foam board. Now this is 5mm foam board that you can get from any hobby supplier. Um, and uh, just using the templates and a pencil just to mark the shapes. Uh, the templates are actually really handy in that they show you how many of each shape you need to build the house. The roof is actually done with modeling card because it doesn't need to be as thick as everything else. Um, modeling card um, you can get from hobby suppliers. It's about the same texture and thickness as the card you get on the back of cheap notepads. Um, but to be honest, any thin card will do. And once that's all marked out, it's just a case of taking your hobby knife and just carefully cutting out all the shapes. So now it's time to actually put the pieces together. Now I use PVA glue for this, which has some um, some positives and some major drawbacks as well. Um, PVA dries really slowly, and it's also not even the strongest of bonds, um, but it makes up for it in that it's because um, it takes so long to dry. Um, if I do need to make any adjustments, they're quite easy to make, and it doesn't glue as fast as some other adhesives and um, if I make a huge mistake it's also pretty easy to just pull it apart and start again. Um, you'll see um, when I was putting this together that one thing the templates don't take into account is 
once your front two wall pieces are on um, it left this gap here in the um, in the middle of them so I just cut out an extra bit of foam board just to fill in that gap Then it was just a case of neatening up any of the um, lines where things weren't quite um, matching up where they should. So it's perhaps where I've I've scored it with the hobby knife and it's not been quite a straight line cut. Um, like I say, positive thing about the PVA is it gave me plenty of time to make those adjustments and just make sure everything fit nice and snug. So after that dried and it came time for me to put the roof on, I realised I'd made a bit of a cock up. Um, it turns out the front and the back of the building were actually supposed to glue onto the building sides rather than the other way around all that's done is it's made the building a little narrower and a little wider and that's where that gap that I spoke about earlier came from um, all I did was cut a new roof piece that fit and just use my hobby knife just to clean up the side so everything sat nice and flush no drama so the next part to do is possibly the most tedious part of the whole project or is it? Stay tuned. Um, it's to do all the wood panelling on the building. Now the guide in White Dwarf says to use balsa wood um, and I've seen another tip from um, Black Magic Craft which is an awesome terrain building YouTube. Um, the That's mostly focused on terrain. Uh, he's a Dungeons & Dragons player that builds lots of awesome terrain for his campaigns and he suggests using little wooden coffee stirrers because they're um, nice thickness, uh, easy to work with, easy to cut. Um, I didn't have either of those things so I just cut out lots of strips of my modeling card and just use them to do the wood panel instead. Um, I didn't go into quite as much detail as they do in the guide in White Dwarf. Um, I didn't want to make too much extra work for myself and I think the end result is still pretty good. Now you'll notice there, all I've done for the door is put wood panelling around it, just use two thin strips to make the um, hinges of the door and then just another little tiny bit of door handle. Now I could have gone into a bit more detail on this and I reckon it's a part of the build that could have been a little better but um, it works and for the windows all I've done with the little squares I've just taken a thin bit of card and just put one down the middle just to add a little bit of extra detail to the windows um, and yeah it works quite well. You will notice that um, I've only really put these sorts of details on the front of the building. I haven't done any side windows and I haven't done any back windows. Um, that was mostly laziness on my part um, but to be honest it's scenery so it's going to be in the background of um, of the action so I didn't think it warranted that kind of detail on it. Um, one of the other things I didn't do that the guide suggests is the guide suggests putting the whole thing on a base and then adding grass flock to that base. Um, it, this is another thing I picked up from Black Magic Craft. Um, depending on where I want to put that piece of terrain. If I want to put it on a cobble battle mat and it's got this grass base on it, it's just going to look really weird and out of place. So this way it can just go wherever I want to put it. Um, the next thing I did was just to make the card look a little bit more like wood is I just used my craft knife just to scratch some lines into the card just to give it a bit of a wood grain effect. Um, 
honestly I was just winging this bit but I'm actually really happy with how it turned out it doesn't come out so well in the video but once it's painted um, that little bit of extra work putting those um, wood grain lines into the card does actually really pay off and I'm glad I took this little extra step so this next part was totally new to me um, so on with this part I want to add a bit of texture to the building so in the parts between the wood paneling um, just to give it that proper building texture um, so just using some good old-fashioned all-purpose wall filler and um, the guide says you can mix it with water I use modeling paste just because um, I bought it and I wanted to try it out and it worked really well and I had an absolute blast doing this step so just mix in equal parts filler and equal parts modeling paste and just slapping that in the gaps between the wood paneling um, you don't need to be too careful with this bit it, it's, it's good to be a little bit careful but it doesn't matter too much if you get a little bit of that filling onto the wood paneling um, as when it's all painted that just gives uh, a little bit of extra texture to the wood paneling and because I didn't use proper wood for those um, it actually benefited a little bit from that um, yeah this step was, was an absolute blast so much so that I actually forgot I was filming and did most of this step as you can see off the camera like a total idiot um, still getting used to doing hobby and filming at the same time so really sorry about that um, what can you do so now you can see a little bit of what I'm actually doing there so you can see I've covered the chimney completely um, in that and I've just and put some bits on the side in between the wood paneling you'll see I'm not trying to make an even coat with this you want it to be uneven because that adds a bit of texture to the building and um, you can achieve that by doing a bit of stippling as well um, and once you've done all the bits in between the wood paneling the effect is really awesome Hey, so remember when I said the wood panelling was possibly the most tedious part of this project? Well, it's time to do the roof and you need really thin card for this. Um, so we're using our old friend the cereal packet and um, what you need to do for this is cut lots of lots and lots of tiny little squares. The guide says uh, about 6 to 10 millimetres because um, you don't want all the tiles to be even. And all you do with this, um, it's nice and easy but it takes a long time is you just starting from the bottom on each side gluing rows of unevenly sized squares one on top of the other so put the build the first row on and then about halfway down that you want to glue the second row of tiny squares and then about halfway down that you want to build the third row of tiny little squares and just keep going until you reach the top this process was really tedious I'm not gonna lie but um, after about the fourth row in I sort of got into this Zen state and I actually found it quite relaxing um, the only things you gotta watch out for is at a certain point you're gonna reach the chimney and you've just got to make sure to cut your pieces around that um, if you can make them fit around that naturally, great, but you may have to cut some little corners out of p certain pieces just to make them fit around that. And yep, yeah, just, just keep going. So when that's finally done, the last thing to do in the entire build is to put a little ridge on the top of that roof. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can cut um, strips that are twice as long as you usually do and then fold them over the top. Um, I opted for a really simple solution because I'm a bit lazy and all I did was just use one long strip of cardboard and the only thing I needed to do really was just to cut a little bit out around the chimney just so that it sat on there nice and neat and that is it for the build. Now one thing I will say when you're building the roof 
um, the tiles don't actually start to look good until about your fourth or fifth row in so don't get disheartened if the first two rows go on and it looks a little weird um, just stick with it and it is gonna look awesome in the end so um, all that's left to do now is to um, give this a lick of paint So I started off by using a bit of this lovely rainbow unicorn masking tape um, just to tape off the chimney because I decided the easiest way to do the roof would be to spray it. I wanted it to be red. I've got this nice red primer from Halfords. So yeah, just masked that off, made sure I was um, spraying from an upward angle so I didn't catch any of the brickwork and just gave that a careful spray all over the roof. So you notice I did actually get a little bit of the red spray onto the plaster. Um, this didn't turn out to be such a big deal and I just used a bit of white paint to go over those bits where it was too noticeable on there. Um, the other thing you notice is I didn't actually prime the rest of the building. Um, I thought it would take the paint okay. This decision would come back to haunt me a little bit later on. Um, so if I was going to do it again I would prime the whole thing like a proper person would. So the first part to actually painting this is just to stain the plaster a little bit. Um, the bright white actually looks all right and if it was a brand new building it would look good for that. Um, I didn't want this to be brand new, I wanted it to be slightly aged. So all I did for that was just took a few drops of brown ink um, and some acrylic medium. I did a little test spot of that and it wasn't quite right so I added in a drop of yellow ink as well um, and then all I did was that was just go over all the parts where I'd put the plaster on earlier and that just really ages the building um, and it's a really cool effect and um, the plaster took the paint really well and just going over all those plaster parts until the whole building has this nice aged browny yellow look so with the building suitably aged it's time to do the wood paneling um, this is where I wished I'd have primed the model um, I decided to try out this fancy contrast paint from Games Workshop. Um, it's designed to do wood. Um, I should have known really because contrast paints are somewhat similar to washes and because the cardboard wasn't primed the paint just really really soaked into that card and I didn't get any of the nice texture effects which I thought I might have got with the um, wood grain lines that I cut into before and the card just ended up soaking up loads of the ink and this bit was a bit of a nightmare once I started with that colour as well because it was quite dark I didn't want to move on to one of my other browns which are a lot lighter um, I'd probably been better off switching to paint but for some reason I stuck with it with the uphill battle and you know once it was done it looked all right and I'm, I'm not I'm not too upset about it and the final step to base coat the building was just to black out the windows another slight thing with me not priming it is that the foam board doesn't take paint too well so it took me a few thin layers to get this done but because it was only really small areas didn't make much difference so yeah just a bit of black on the window panels and um, just on the um, metal parts of the door which is the the hinges and the handle and now we're just going to add a little bit of depth to the roof tiles um, I'm just taking this uh, dark red wash and just getting a big old brush and just applying that wash all over the um, tiles um, this wash works well as well you'll see a few places where the cardboard is actually still showing through where the spray paint didn't quite hit it that wash should catch those areas as well and just cover up some of those crimes uh, and once that's done you could quite happily call it a day here and um, that would be a pretty respectable piece of terrain to put on any battlefield. Um, I'm just going to do a few more steps 
just to give it a little bit of extra something and just make it pop just a little bit more so the first extra step is to take a little bit of red paint this red paint's a little lighter than the base coat and we're just gonna do a little dry brush all over the tiles so just take um, most of the paint off that brush I use a nice big brush for this that I wasn't too bothered about the bristles getting a bit messy on because this can mess up your brushes a little bit just worked off most of the paint on that brush and then just gently move that brush over all the tiles and that'll just catch all the edges with a slightly lighter red and just give the tiles a bit more dimension um, as I was doing that last step I noticed the um, just a flat top on the chimney just didn't look right at all I tried to paint a little black square on the top of it and it just looked awful so what I did was I just cut out um, a little square from inside the chimney just to give it a bit of depth and then just put some of the dark brown paint in there just to make it look like it's all sooty uh, next I just took some even lighter red paint and just used that to do some edge highlighting on the tiles so just taking a small paintbrush and just getting that red paint and just running that along the top of the ridge and just on the edges of some of the tiles just to um, give them a little extra highlight and again just even more depth to them uh, then I wanted to add some highlights to the uh, wood panels um, they were all looking really dark thanks to my earlier mistakes um, so all I did with this it was a dry brush again so I just took a small dry brush and worked most of the paint off the brush and just gently ran the brush over all the wood panel parts and the corners as well just to catch all those raised edges um, this is where the um, scoring that I did with my hobby knife before to get those wood grain lines in there this is where that paid off a little bit because the paint just caught the raised edges where I'd done that scoring um, and just brought out some of that detail that I'd carved in there to make it a bit more worthwhile um, and I was as careful as I could be with this bit I wasn't too bothered if I got a little bit of brown paint on the edges where the wood meets the um, plaster because a little bit of light brown there is actually darker than the um, staining on there and it, it can just come across as a little bit of shading on that so um, neat as I could but I didn't have to be super careful with this bit for the last little couple of bits of detail um, all I had to do was I wanted to add a little bit of depth to the windows so I just took a little bit of dark grey paint and just drew some little rough lines into the window panels um, just so they're not just all black um, and then I just wanted to make the door hinges the black parts on there just look a little bit more metallic so I took a tiny bit of metallic paint um, with a tiny dry brush worked most of the paint off there and just caught the edges of those hinges with metal as well just to give it that um, sort of dark metal look and finally I wanted to add a little something to those um, stained plaster bits um, so I just took a bit of uh, Screaming Skull which is kind of like a creamy bone colour um, and uh, again just a dry brush with this so working most of the paint off and just catching the centre of all those areas in between the wood panelling um, so this highlights the centre parts and makes the recesses closest to the wood panelling um, look darker by comparison um, and just catches all the raised edges of that nice um, texture um, that I put on there and it just makes the whole thing look a little bit more three-dimensional um, and with that done um, that was me finished and there it is I'm super proud of this for my first attempt at building scenery in probably five years and my second attempt at doing this particular building which I must have done about 20 years ago and the difference is staggering um, looking forward to taking some of the skills I've learned building this and building some more ambitious terrain um, 
I hope you can learn from some of my mistakes I've made here and I hope some of you get inspired to build some scenery. If you want to build this townhouse there are links in the description for the um, article in White Dwarf where I got this build from and if you enjoyed this video please like, comment, subscribe, all those things help the channel. Um, if you want to help the channel a little more we have a Patreon which you can join for as little as a pound a month. Um, we also have some links in the description for where to get some hobby supplies and some of those links are actually affiliate links which if you click those links and then make your purchases and um, this channel gets a little kickback from that which will be super appreciated and until next time thank you very much for watching goodbye